you mentioned earlier uh, that uh, a more aggressive upfront approach might lead to better outcomes, duration of response. So what were you referring to? Well, I, um, unlike uh, many, I, I still uh, am a somewhat of a proponent of rituximab. Um, and I, I, I hate to, uh, I really don't like to bring up antidotes, antidotes, yeah. anecdotes, yeah. but uh, I think I'm about uh, probably four for six in long-term remissions and people who I've used um, dexamethasone plus rituximab early in their course, not necessarily right at presentation, mm. um, but, but early within six months of their diagnosis. And most of these people have been young people. And I cannot say that they weren't going to remit anyway, but it's four out of six. So um, I, I feel there's, there's probably something there and they'd also been on other treatments. So when I do that, I, I will usually give, um, depending on how well they're tolerating it, three to four uh, pulses of dexamethasone every two weeks. Okay. Plus the standard uh, four weeks of uh, rituximab, huh. uh, 375 per meter squared, though Europeans use less. Um, and, uh, you know, in one case, I actually used mycophenolate for a while after that. So um, I'll ask you the same question. Are there any um, upfront combinations, uh, either emerging data or strategies that you use? Um, and I actually do want to mention specifically recombinant thrombopoietin because I know that there was some recent data presented at this meeting at um, this year's ASH. Um, yeah, the, this was kind of an interesting abstract, although um, we didn't really get what the response rate really was. Mm -hmm. But um, there was an abstract where upfront they gave high dose dex plus recombinant human TPO. Mm -hmm. um, and they gave the recombinant human TPO only for 14 days and only followed these patients for a year. Mm -hmm. um, they said that the response rate was better with that versus DEX alone at a year. Um, unclear how good that response really was. Um, I'm not sure why that would be so. It's interesting because there also was an abstract suggesting that just giving high dose DEX was giving them long term responses huh. at a year. So, you know, with, with so many of these therapies, we see these great responses early on. Yeah. Um, and it just seems like then we look further, we follow longer, we check more patients, and it yeah. just doesn't pan out. So is it, is it safe sure. to give recombinant thrombopoietin? I thought that was done before. So thank you for asking that. Um, so this is a different recombinant than the one that everybody was up in arms about, I think it was probably about 10, 15 years uh -huh. ago. What was given was a pegylated truncated molecule. Okay. Um, and they use the pegylated molecule because um, TPO has a very short half-life. So um, in this... And in when they gave that... Uh, it induced autoantibodies in patients it was a to endogenous thrombopoietin, and it then was the a neutralizing were. antibody yeah. to endogenous TPO. And what happened was there were actually three. This was all in volunteers who were going to be platelet apheresis donors, um, and three of the yeah, it was really horrible. Yeah. Three of those volunteers became pancytopenic, yeah. and it lasted years. Um, um, and eventually, the final patient. I mean, years later did remit mm. and normalize, but it was very frightening. I mean, they were down at very, very low levels. So that was abandoned, and that's why new molecules were actually looked for, um, because it was felt that we just couldn't. It seems um, that, and it, this is as far as I know only, only available in China right now, but okay. it seems that the new recombinant human TPO, which is really, I, I think, absolutely identical um, to the the endogenous molecule um, appears to not be causing that problem, but we don't have a lot of follow-up data yet. Sure. So I sure. think we're going to need those data f to feel totally comfortable, but at least the molecule is not really different yeah. than, um, than the human okay. endogenous molecule. And, and I do want to point out recombinant, recombinant thrombopoietin is very different from the thrombopoietin mimetics, right. which are analogous and do the job of thrombopoietin but have no sequence homology to, right. so, so they're, not, they're not recombinant. They're binding where TPO binds, yes. um, or at least at somewhere at the receptor because they bind in different places depending on the molecule, but they are not yeah. at all looking like that. And, and there's an awful lot of data about it and um, nobody has seen any problems with neutralizing antibody to endogenous TPO.